if they asked me this a question a few years ago, I would have said none because we can't actually scale them up. So we currently, how we make nanoparticles, you know, we use a beaker with filled with a solvent and we drip or filled with water and, and a polymer, whichever way we choose to do it. And we typically drip a solvent with our drug loaded into this, um, into this uh, beaker and we stir it. That, that's not scalable. And, and, and using solvents in, in, in products that are going to go in for systemic delivery, going to be delivered directly into the bloodstream um, intravenously is, is a difficult challenge for the regulators. So that, that's not going, that to me a few years ago wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. But now with the advent of microfluidics, which have been used to manufacture, you know, the lipids for the mRNA vaccine. And that offers a real opportunity for scale because those can be scaled up, um, and you know they can use they can use solvent free processes. So that offers a real opportunity there. But I still think we, you know, yes, we, we I mean, we can do nano, and we have the potential to improve getting uh, getting drugs into the brain using nano, but we see it's still a dynamic system. So the blood still passes through the brain with the nanoparticles in it. If they don't hang around there, they're still going to pass through and maybe not be taken up as much. So trying to maybe get some sort of targeting moiety onto them where they maybe they maybe target to the brain, the, the, the something on the blood brain barrier and, and keep them there for a while where they can begin to diffuse in. But that adds, you know, that's that's not an easy technology to develop either. So that's that's difficult. So I think they have potential, especially with with the advent of, of microfluidics. Um, but I just don't think a standard nanoparticle is going to give us the, the penetration into the brain that we need. But again, we are, so currently in my lab, we do, we are developing an air and a TCAN loaded nanoparticle because our idea would be to put the implant in at the time of surgery to hit the cancer pretty hard um, at that point and then sort of continue to treat the patient systemically with a nanoparticle that will hopefully hopefully get more drug into the brain um, and reduce, you know, reduce the dose we need to deliver and, and the side effects that comes with the drug when it's given systemically. So maybe as, as another alternative that, you know, to keep recurrence, to slow down recurrence um, and, and really that's sort of what we're, um, what we're thinking. So as I said, there is potential there, but there's challenges in developing them and scaling them up. Um, and, and, you know, ultimately, there's very few GMP nanoparticle manufacturing facilities available in the world. So how, how do we, you know, where do we go? Who does it for us? How do we get these GMP grade nanoparticles that are going to win your clinical trials? So that's, that's, that's a challenge as well. So those are things that we need, we need to be thinking about. And that's an initiative I'm working with in the UK as part of the University of Birmingham to set these facilities up for these innovative technologies like implants and nanoparticles that are going to come out of universities and possibly have big benefit. But if we can't manufacture them to the standards required by the regulators, then they're never going to reach the clinic.